look at us, we're clogging again. <clears throat> I had a, a, a business appointment in the next town over and it takes a few minutes, so I thought, well, let's just talk. So, um, a lot of people lately have been coming to me and asking things like, what should I price my products and how do you calculate that? And so I thought we would just talk about that for a minute. Um, it's every country is going to be probably a little bit different because the, um, your materials cost more or less depending on where you live. So you definitely need to calculate how much it costs you to um, make your whatever it is you're making. Um, it doesn't matter if you're making books or monkey leashes. It, it doesn't matter. You still have overhead. You still have uh, materials costs and um, you have time involved. You have equipment that you have to use that might get... Um, it's like it's not going to last forever, stuff that depreciates and you have to re rebuy after a while. So all that needs to be taken into consideration. Um, and then over the top of that, you need to pay yourself. Um, and I, I would hope that you would try to pay yourself more than what a 14-year-old kid would get with his first job mowing lawns. So please, please pay yourself. Um, because at the end of the year, also depending on where you live, but in the United States, the government takes a huge percentage of your profit. So, you know, just because, you know, you make X amount of dollars on a book when you pay your taxes, well, you can cut that a third off of that so that all has to be taken into consideration so that being said um, I've noticed that um, especially women for some reason <laughs> we are um, we have a very apologetic nature a lot of the time we fall into this trap where we apologize for the price that we put on what we create. And we might not do that at um, like a desk job. Like if you work for a company and you go clock in and you know. But when we create something, when, we, when we're an artist, a lot of us will sell ourselves short and devalue our work. And that is like across the board, like it happens more often than it doesn't happen. And I've noticed that men so much don't fall into that trap quite as um, easily as, as women do for some reason. A lot of men are like, this is what I priced it. This is what I need to get. And if you don't like it, that's cool. Somebody else will come along and buy it. I mean, they, they're just very whatever, nonchalant about that. But women are like, okay, so I spent, you know, a week doing this and it cost me $30 just in materials and the, you know what I mean? I drove all over the state to get, so the, it's like they have to make excuses for the price that they're putting on things. And then when they think of a price that they really should put on something, they usually cut that by at least a third. They're like, they should put a hundred dollars on it, but like, oh, nobody's going to buy this. So they put 60, you know, when they haven't even put it up for sale yet and they have no idea. So we need to stop doing that, um, especially you ladies out there, because I know you're out there because I have fallen into the exact same trap. I've done the exact same thing. And um, so I know, I, I know, I know that's what happens. So um, try to stop doing that. Um, because if you don't value your work, if you don't value your art, nobody else will either. If you put you know, three days worth of time on a project and $20 in materials and you were driving around using your car, using gas or ordering things online, paying shipping, 
and waiting for it to get there and all this stuff and you know and then you put 25 bucks on it you know it's like you, you just made three bucks <laughs> so um, please please don't do that to yourself because then everybody else is gonna think oh well everybody's stuff is just worth 25 bucks you know and they don't value it either so you're not doing yourself a favor and you're not doing other artists a favor and you're not doing the customer a favor either because you're not um, instructing them on because a lot of people who aren't artists don't understand the time the effort the research the practice all these things involved um, just because you did make something in three days well was that the first time you made it probably not you know how much trial and error went into that ahead of time so please start valuing your work and please start pricing accordingly and um, I think once you get a little taste of success a little taste of um, of that value I think it's gonna suit you and I think you'll be a happier person and you're not gonna burn out because even if you love something um, if it becomes a chore because because you have to do it you're not making any money at it um, you're gonna burn out you're gonna burn out really really quickly and that would be sad to turn something that you love to do into something that makes you bitter and so you just don't even want to do it anymore it's like it's not even worth it to you anymore and that would be that would be a tragedy that would be really sad so something else I wanted to say just lost it it's gone Woo! I'll probably think of it later <laughs> I'm sitting in my appointment like ah oh, curses um so so yeah so please Please think about that the next time you create something and, and you decide that you're going to sell it. Um, because most people have bills to pay. I don't know about you guys, but guess what? Life is expensive. And um, and I, I live a really simple life. But, you know, we have a two-income family. And, and I know a lot of you are in the same exact boat. You might have kids. Um, I know from my standpoint, medical bills are crazy. Um, if you have rent, mortgage, you know, you have to drive a car or have some kind of transportation. So whether you have a car payment and insurance and gas and all that that goes along with it, or you take public transportation, well, that's not free either. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, life life is, is not cheap. Life isn't cheap. And especially when you got little kids that you got to put shoes on them and you know and then they get sick and they have to go to the doctor and so all this stuff just snowballs into craziness and um, and so if you if you want to make money at your craft you're gonna have to value your work and you're gonna have to price it accordingly and you're gonna have to price it what it's worth so, um, because you'll, I mean, you won't be able to make any money at it. And it's hard to make money with art. Not very many people are able to have a full-time job and pay their bills doing their art. That, that is a rare thing. And it is even a rarer thing to get rich or whatever, you know, only a couple of people are ever, you know what I mean? And most people, <laughs> they die and then, then, then their stuff is worth more. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's always that. Um, so maybe when we all pass away, our stuff is going to be priceless, right? Um, and so, and there's also very few people out there that have, you know, unlimited disposable income and they don't care what they get for their stuff. They just don't want it all sitting around. So they sell it so that they can just go buy more supplies, but they don't need to make money. So there's those people too. And I am not throwing shade because that would be great. I would, I would love to be in that situation. <laughs> Uh, I'd probably never be in that situation, but there are folks out there like that. Maybe retired folks or maybe folks that just, you know, don't need to have a job and that's great. <laughs> um, so, but those of us that need to make money, those of us that need to pay, have, have bills like significant expenses that we have to pay, um, unless you, unless you 
you know, have a reality check and um, price your stuff the way it should be priced, it's it's just it just won't work. It just won't work for you. Okay, guys, I am almost there, so I don't wanna I don't wanna waste any more of your time. This was probably oh, it's ten minutes. We jabbered for ten minutes. Um, so I hope I hope those of you um, that have been asking finds this information um, maybe a little helpful. Maybe it was a kick in the butt that you needed. Um, maybe you don't agree, and that's cool too. You don't have to agree. Not everybody agrees with me, let me tell you. <laughs> Not even my family. <laughs> so <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> um, but I hope I hope it helped some of you out there that maybe had some questions and, and wanted some advice or maybe wanted a kick in the butt. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me in my in my straight talk clog today. And um, I will catch you guys really soon. I've got a super fun DIY thing coming up real soon. I just have to wait for something to come in the mail tomorrow. So, um, but I think it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, I think you guys will like it. All right. Have a wonderful day and I will catch you soon. Bye guys.